Hey folks, dude here, coming at you on Friday, 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 June 5th. Now the thing about it is, on Fridays, I try to do something mm, maybe a little bit different. So you know what that's going to be? It's going to be an episode of Knife Blog. That's right, Knife Blog. Today we're going to be talking about, of all things, one of my absolute favorite pieces of cutlery ever on planet Earth. That's always on my person, almost always, except for when I fly, I have to stash it somewhere. And of course, they don't like the fact you're carrying one. I have carried, for probably the better part since the 1980s, some some iteration I've always had on my person, a Swiss Army knife. This one, of course, being my standard carry, 10 ounces of pocket-killing ferocity known as the Champ, or the Champion, actually the Champion. The Champ was actually the previous iteration, and I actually have one of those as well. This was my classic carry from ever ago. As a matter of fact, it's got a very, very, very old style sheath I modded to carry on my belt. And you can see the difference in terms of size. It's pretty much not a whole heck of a lot. This one, of course, being the lighter version, of course, being the champ or champion. I forget which way it goes, but one is bigger than the other. This one has a little bit more stuff, so it's a little bit wider. It really has pretty much only like the uh, classic hay bale carrier so you put a loop of hay bale through there you know the wire or the string or what have you it really only has differently it's got a pair of pliers and that's pretty much about it i think this one also has on board no this one doesn't have the pin it doesn't have the uh the pen so yeah this one's this one's got a couple more toys this one's actually got a pen on board you know so it's got a ballpoint pen it's got a pin that would use classically for popping blisters and the like. And, of course, it has a glass of screwdriver, which is an easy add-on. You simply just screw it into the corkscrew. You can add that on to any Swiss Army knife that has a corkscrew on board. Now, these are what's known as your classic 91 millimeters. And, literally, that's the scale length. There is roughly about four sizes of Swiss Army knife. You have the little dinky guys, you know, the little tiny pocket boogers. You have the 70 uh, some millimeter, I think is what those guys are. Then you have the 91 millimeter, which is what, you know, your classic Swiss Army knife size is going to be. It's going to be a 91 millimeter length. And they're talking about length from scale edge to scale edge, not blade length. Because the, uh, the blade length on these can vary very, very hugely. Uh, conservatively, this is what's going to be the biggest Swiss Army knife is what's known as the XALT or the XXLT, which is this huge monstrosity that has a flashlight in the middle. Or, the one that's not available in the United States has got a lighter in the middle. It is ridiculous, okay? Now, to put it in perspective, this one is 10 ounces, okay? Both of these guys together is probably bordering on a pound. I'm thinking XL, XL, XLT is like something on order of about that, okay? You know, it's just, it's ridiculous. The damn thing's like six inches wide. You would never fit it in your pocket. It's pretty much something that just sits on your desk and you go, See? I got a $500 Swiss Army knife. Something that you really won't find in normal, you know, venues and people using the things. The blade composition is such, it's, it's a stainless steel of fairly high chromium. Not a huge amount of vanadium, copper, sulfur, all the rest of that stuff. The blade steel is very, very, very hard to rust. Also, it has very, very good ductility. It bends and it returns to true very, very easily. It is a very decent blade steel. It is not built to have the best edge on planet Earth. That will just not happen. Make sure you have a sharpening stone or a diamond hone around and touch them up. That said, this is what I refer to jokingly as my trach blade. So yes, these things will take a scary, scary edge. The only thing this blade is ever going to be used for is popping a hole in somebody's throat or emergency surgery. That's the only reason I would ever use that blade. That's why it's got such a wicked edge on it. I drove around a long time on the, was it, 1200 grit or the finest DMT stone, 2000 grit, whatever the heck it is, the green stone, and literally honed this thing to a absolute razor's edge. And then stropped it gently. It is as sharp as I can make this steel. That's why it did that. Now, in terms of the actual composition of these guys, you will find a slip joint blade, and you will find a locking variety. Now, the locking variety is almost always going to be found in the 109 or 111, can't talk today, 109 or 111 millimeter length blades. These are what's known as, this one, of course, is going to be known as the Fireman. 
This one, of course, has a locking lever on the right side of the blade that unlocks the blade, and it's basically just a block that slips underneath on the back side of the blade to keep it from doing anything but staying open. It's not the strongest lock, but it is an actual lock. This one is available with a, as a one-hander, as the, um, the fireman. Uh, this one, of course, is what's known as the previous iteration, which I think would also be a fireman, but they don't make this one any longer. Now, what it does have on board is it's got the big honking blade. So, what is that, 109 almost? 100, 100, it's about 109 millimeters. So, pretty good size blade length. It does actually have what I jokingly refer to as the gut hook, but this is actually intended for people cutting seat belts. So, you can slip it underneath. You're not going to cut the guy. Basically, can one-hand the belt. Uh, does actually have a non-locking screwdriver on this end. And it has a non-locking classic combination can opener, screwdriver, you know. This one, of course, being the bottle opener. Does, of course, have a corkscrew. Does, of course, have an awl. The rest of these, you know, filler plates are just filler plates. There's nothing else in there. Now, there is actually a version of this used by the military. The Dutch Army and the German Army have both fielded the absolutely very close to it this is, of course, a civilian version, which is kind of hard to source now, but this is what's known as the Trekker. The standard military is known as just the military. Military one-hander would basically have that little bubble top where you can basically stick your finger in and open it up kind of like a, a, a Spyderco or a lot of the other knives are doing now where they basically have like a raised top with a hole in it that you basically put your thumb in and you flick it open. Now, this guy is different. The real reason why this one is different is because it has a liner lock. In there, this piece of steel is actually the liner. That's actually what holds this blade open and locks it. Now, actual composition of the blade is slightly different. It's got a bit more belly. It is a fatter blade. This one, of course, being the liner lock. This one, of course, being... I'm sorry, this one being the liner lock with the green scale. This one, of course, being the standard button lock. And you can see both these blades are a little different. The grinds are even different. You can see the grind on this one is kind of more... It kind of comes more as a triangle in the top edge versus this one being just a standard flat grind. This one has more of a saber grind, I guess you would say. And it actually looks like it has a bit of a hollow on board. This one's pretty much just a flat grind. Nothing crazy there. Of course, they're saying for the military, the military is asking for more belly. They want the knife to cut more aggressively, so that's why they made them with a concave. Now, the other cool thing about this one, I'm actually reaching for the button here because I've been carrying these things for so many years. I'm actually not used to this one being a liner lock. Now, the cool thing is, it does have a second position that locks it basically at half cock. Now, the cool part about it is, is this one also has a very easy to open, very hell for stout. Listen for it. The screwdriver on this one is a lot more substantial. It is not anything trifling. You can see in sheer mass and size that this one actually is quite a bit more substantial with the military versus the civilian. Reason being is this one also has a liner lock. So the actual screwdriver is locked open and not going anyplace. Now, in terms of this one, it also has that same device that you would use to get somebody clear of like a seat belt. Or you could use it to cut webbing. If you're a parachutist and you're hung up in a tree, you could basically, you know, cut yourself loose. You know, you do have this to, you know, hack yourself free. You're not going to get hurt or anything. And, you know, obviously you have false edges and blunt edges so you don't cut on yourself. Always good stuff. This one does not have a lock. So you basically could one hand it closed. Once you get free, get yourself out of the tree and all the rest of that good stuff like that there. It does obviously have the, you know, the classic toothpick and, uh, and, uh, you know, tweezers. I mean, that's, that's something that the Swiss Army has always been very, very good about is toothpick and tweezers is on most of their knives. Uh, simply because they figure you're going to get a boo-boo, you're going to have to pick something out. You know, you want to have these things around just in case. <clears throat> now, the other thing, too, it's actually kind of really, really cool about the Swiss Army is they're everywhere. If you break it, you're not going to cry. You're going to replace these things very, very easily. Literally, you're going to be looking for the classic gray box. Literally, you're going to be looking for any knife store. Literally, you're going to be looking for any place on the internet, and you will probably find one. Uh, as a matter of fact, I actually do have one of these known as the Hunter. Now, what's the difference between the Hunter and the other one? Smaller hook. Instead of for a seatbelt, it's actually for gutting. Now, the other thing, too, is you will find these with the saw blades. Now, the saw blades on these things are actually... 
I have, you know, told this story many, 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 many times. You can see the difference between the uh, uh, the 91 millimeter versus the 111 millimeter saws. They are it's basically about a centimeter's difference. Okay, I like the big one versus the small one. But any of these things, and you can ask anybody that's ever owned a Swiss Army knife. These things will buzz through a two by four like a coping saw from hell. Literally, they these things cut like crazy. Uh, this one's basically NIB. I don't really use it. It's one of my spare hunters. I really kind of truly do like the Trekkers. That, that's just me, okay? I really like the Trekkers. Yes, it's a fatter knife, but you know what? It's a very substantial, good-feeling knife. Uh, in terms of actual fit and everything, this one is actually not a bad carry for me, but it, it kills the pockets, man. Every pair of pants I have, the pockets, the right side pocket is threadbare, or it has a hole in it from this knife literally just ripping it asunder. This one is a little easier on your pockets. It holds most of the tools. This thing is available as the um, the work master or work work something XL. I mean, it, it's it's literally this knife about that wide. It is absolutely insane. So basically, this knife about that wide kind of loses some practicality because it's just, it's just getting too big. It's about the size of like a buck knife, and it's about as wide as you know the Swiss Champ or Champion. Either one of those two, you know, it, it's it's a lot of mass. And this thing's 10 ounces, okay? This one is closing in on about mm, 8 or so. I mean, it's, it's not light. The scales are actually pretty light because they're just nylon. But this thing, with that amount of stuff on board, it'd probably be a bit of about 12 ounces or so riding around your pocket. It, it's just going to be too much meat, too much mass, and it's just going to get completely impractical. But if you guys are looking for some really cool stuff, mmm. Swiss Army knives, man. I commend them to you. I love these things. I've carried these things forever. And I don't want to make this video too terribly long, but you know what? There's some stuff I'm passionate about. Swiss Army knives. I I am <laughs> I am definitely a huge, huge fan, man. I just I just love these things. So I'm gonna break up with this one, folks. Eat good, keep the tender as always, always, you know what you love it. Swiss Army knife goodness. Mm. I, just, I can't have enough of them. <laughs> I think I do have too many of them. That's Mrs. Dude. Oh. <laughs> well, now I'm going to break up on this one. Eat good, keep the tendering. As always, always, you know what? You love it. Swiss Army Knife goodness. Mm. I'll see you guys. Urgh!